Hello, Eric Sheptuck coming at you. So, uh, <clears throat> here's the political news for the day. You know, for a while now, I've been harping about the fact that DC Mayor Muriel Bowser, by no fault of her own, is a de facto dictator. Uh, I mean, there are the things that she does as mayor that you may or may not like, but just the fact that, like I've said in the past, she was voted in with 11% of the of DC's Democratic base in the 2014 uh, primary, which is what matters in DC because every mayor has been a Democrat, and because she's running essentially unopposed because several unknown people are running against her that those two things add up to her being a de facto dictator just because of the low voter turnout and because of having these unknown people running against her in her re-election bid but I've done my political homework as you should too and I've studied about Attorney General Carl Racine, who I'm beginning to work with. Uh, he's a good guy. Uh, as a person, I like him more than I like Muriel Bowser. Uh, you should know that by now, but just in case you didn't already know, uh, yes, I do like Carl Racine as a person more than I like Muriel Bowser, their candidacies aside. Um, but I learned that Carl Racine is completely unopposed. Nobody is running against him, whereas she has unknown people running against her. Uh, and that points to the low level of interest in local politics here in Washington, D.C. Of course, we're overshadowed by the federal government, uh, but that's no excuse not to pay attention to local politics because all politics are in fact local. Uh, the federal stuff does trickle down and here in DC we're not in a state so uh, we get the full effect. We don't even have a state to buffer the federal effects before they reach our DC government. But um, anyway, as I did my homework concerning Carl Racine, I learned a few other things and I was reminded of a few things. Uh, I've been in DC since the summer of 2005. I saw these different bits of news when they came out. Uh, they've taken on renewed significance though and I had to remind myself of some of the facts. So the law that said that DC would have an elected Attorney General was passed by the DC Council in 2010 and then in in 2012 they they tried to put off the first election of our formerly appointed Attorney General until 2018 because the, the mayoral elections were always in the uh, national midterms so uh, Anyway, a guy named Paul Zuckerberg actually fought it. And in, in uh, 2014, the court finally ruled that DC had to have an election for the Attorney General in that year because the 2010 law left voters to believe that they would be able to elect the Attorney General for the first time in 2014. Now, when the court order was uh, issued, it was after that year's primary. And so five Democratic candidates for attorney general ran against each other in the general election. Uh, but that just points to the struggle that D.C. has had getting a, an elected attorney general and more than three years into his term, him having taken office on January 2nd, 2015, uh, he's still struggling to figure out 
how he can fulfill the second part of his mandate. The Attorney General has always worked for the D.C. government, uh, and he still does represent the government, though he now represents them as an elected official. Uh, he's the first one to be elected, as opposed to having transferred from an appointed position into an elected one. Uh, before him, uh, Nathan Irvin, was, or, or Irvin Nathan, he's got two first names, <laughs> um, was the appointed Attorney General, and he chose not to run and try and become the, the first elected. But anyway, um, so let, let me see. Well, we have yet to fully appreciate the possible effects of an elected Attorney General. The, the greatest one being, in my opinion, that he or she, it, it being a he presently, can serve as a counterweight to the power of the mayor. Uh, and, but anyway, like I was saying a minute ago, he is still trying to figure out how to fulfill the second part of his mandate, which is to now serve the people as opposed to just serving the government. And I did learn that initially Carl Racine was against the legalization of marijuana, but then he learned that two-thirds of Washingtonians were in support of it, and, and he changed his position. Uh, some might present that as him having flip-flopped. Uh, I would say that it seems more as though he allows the will of the people to determine what he does. Uh, and so when he learned that the majority of Washingtonians, the vast majority at that, supported legalization of marijuana, he said, okay, then I do too. Yeah, but uh, be that as it may, um, tomorrow, April 22nd, 2018, Carl Racine at 1230 p.m., will be at 945 G Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. That is the First Congregational United Church of Christ, otherwise known as First Church. Uh, and he will be communicating with the, uh, the faith community as to how he can work with the faith community to assist marginalized communities, like the homeless. Uh, and so they do request that you RSVP, I'm not sure if it's too late to do that, but just in case it isn't, uh, you have to email housingforalldc at gmail.com, and four is spelled out, F-O-R. Again, that's housingforalldc at gmail.com. Uh, and that church is four blocks from my church, so... I will leave during coffee hour and head on down there uh, and hang out with the Attorney General who, like I say, is running completely unopposed and, you know, we really need to fix these local politics, we need to get better voter turnout and we need to get more people running for office so that there is a real choice. Alright, I'll stop there for now.